Hi everyone, if you've seen my work before, chances are you've heard me mention the Fourth Estate and how our media are derelict in their duties to it. At least that's what I believe. You might have even seen me yelling it into a bullhorn into the media's face. You try and have it both ways, don't they, in the media? Because for seven years they've smeared and slandered Julian Assange. For seven years they have led a campaign of hate against him. And you have to have why? Is it because they're all co-opted? Is it because the fourth estate is dead? Yeah, that was me. Well, it occurred to me the other day that people watching my videos may not know what the fourth estate is or what it is meant to do. After all, up until just a few years ago, I didn't have a clue what it was either. So how can I expect everybody else to? And with that in mind, here's a brief outline of the fourth estate and why it is so important to a functioning democracy. Thomas Carlyle, a British historian, among many other things, and acclaimed writer, in his book on heroes and worship, attributed the term fourth estate to Whig Party MP Edmund Burke when he used it in parliamentary debate in 1787 on the opening up of press reporting in the UK's House of Commons. Now, Burke reportedly turned to the gallery where the press had been congregated for the first time and said, There are three estates in Parliament, but in the reporter's gallery yonder, there sits a fourth estate more important far than they all. It is not a figure of speech or witty saying, it is literal fact, very momentous to us in these times. So even back then, as you can see, they knew the importance of the fourth estate. And what they mean there is obviously the press. The first three estates of government that Burke was referring to were the clergy, the nobility and the commoners, while in some other countries they are referred to as legislative, executive and judiciary, America for instance. So the fourth estate, or fourth power as it is sometimes called, refers to the role of a free press in a democracy. It is there to hold the other three main branches of government, if you like, to account by informing the electorate, the public, of what the government are up to in their name. It really is that simple. It's otherwise known as journalism. It's the free press which keeps a check on the powerful in a democracy. Now, free press, or journalism, as you probably refer to it, is guided by five principal values according to Wikipedia. Here it is. First one is honesty. Journalists must be truthful. It is unacceptable to report information known to be false or report facts in a misleading way to give the wrong impression. Number two, independence and objectivity. Journalists must avoid topics in which they have a financial or personal interest that would provide them a particular benefit in the subject matter. As that Interest may introduce bias in their reporting. I'm looking at you, MSNBC, and your adverts for Raytheon and Boeing, but we'll carry on with this. Or give the impression of such bias. In cases where a journalist may have a specific financial or personal interest, the interest should be disclosed. Of course, they rarely are in today's free press. Fairness, number three. Journalists must prevent facts with impartiality and neutrality, presenting other viewpoints and sides to a story where these exist. It is unacceptable to slant facts. Number four, diligence. A journalist should gather and present pertinent facts to provide a good understanding of the subject reported. And number five, accountability. A journalist must be accountable for their work, prepared to accept criticism and consequences. So that's the duties of our fourth estate. Now, knowing all of this, you tell me, would you say our media, our fourth estate, has been honest, independent, fair, diligent, or accountable in their reporting of major events for, I don't know, the last 20 years, say? Of course not. Not even close. Now, as I, as I have documented over the last two years or so, we don't so much have a media anymore as we do a bunch of sycophants writing opinion pieces on the powerful whose entire careers depend on access to the very people they are supposed to hold account. And there is the inherent problem that we have. That's not journalism.
That's just public relations to the elite, if you ask me. Just look at how our old media, as I like to call them now, cheered on the persecution and psychological torture of one of their own for nearly a decade. That's Julian Assange of WikiLeaks. And they've been giving an extremely biased and slanted view of the facts surrounding his case, which many believe is the biggest threat to press freedom the Western world has ever seen. I'm one of them. They've led a smear campaign for years with misleading headline after misleading headline, which has skewed public opinion to the point where a man who has never been accused of rape by any person in Sweden is somehow looked upon as a deviant facing charges of rape, when of course there were no charges whatsoever, rather than a seven times nominated for the Nobel Peace Prize Award journalist, which is what he is. Well, multiple awards, actually. A man who has never faced any charges in Sweden for any crime whatsoever, and who has been deliberately isolated, demonised and abused by a group of democratic states. And that's not my words, by the way. That's United Nations rapporteur on torture, Niels Meltzer. That's his words. Jeremy Corbyn and many other politicians have rightly said over the course of the last few years that a free press is vital for democracy. Here he is saying it just last April. The British press is the least trusted in Europe, including non-EU countries like North Macedonia and Serbia. Just let that sink in for a moment, that there is this degree of scepticism and mistrust of so many newspaper titles. The owners and editors of most of our country's newspapers have dragged down standards so far that their hard-working journalists are simply not trusted by the public, and that is a travesty. A free press, a free press is essential to our democracy, but much of our press isn't actually very free at all. Now, with this in mind, doesn't the sorry state of our media right now mean our democracy is on life support? Some would say it's dead already. All of this may seem quite depressing, of course. It certainly is a bad situation we find ourselves in. There's no doubt about that. If Julian Assange is extradited to the United States for publishing facts that are in the public interest, surely that would mean that we only have the illusion of a free press and democracy in this country, right? Well, as serious as things no doubt are, all is not lost. Not yet, anyway. For the reasons why I direct you back to the person who was attributed to coining the phrase the fourth estate. And that is, of course, Edmund Burke. For he is the man who famously once said, the only thing necessary for the triumph of evil is for good men to do nothing. Well, the good people of the UK are certainly not doing nothing, it seems. Because as we have heard recently, thanks in part to public pressure, remember, Assange's extradition case has now been earmarked for a full four-week trial, which certainly points to the court's understanding the gravity of the case and the precedent it would set if he was extradited to the United States to be tried in a secret court in Virginia, or worse, in what journalist John Pilger worries could become a show trial. It is not just that piece of good news that should give us hope for our democracy going forward, though. A powerful fifth estate has emerged thanks to the wonders of modern technology. Ordinary citizens, bloggers, vloggers, independent journalists, everyday people like you and me are now learning to create their own content with their mobile phones and edit and publish their work in the public interest on their own platforms, bypassing our current fourth estate altogether. And in the coming weeks and months, I'll be attempting to highlight these fantastic people and those who are teaching them. Because old media, it's fair to say, I don't think is fit for purpose in the 21st century. And it seems the good people of the UK aren't going to be doing nothing and allowing evil to triumph, destroying our democracy in the process. So please make sure you're subscribed and click the bell so you don't miss any of my interviews and reports that will be coming on the people who are building a new media fit for the information age we are now entering. Thanks very much for watching. Support independent media, folks. Because if you do, we might just save our democracy.